If you got your Bibles, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, then Luke chapter 2. Amen. We're going to revisit a place real quick and then move on with some other things. This morning, I want to talk to you about the proclamation. Amen. That in uh, literally a thousand years or longer before Jesus showed up to earth, there was a proclamation made in the book of Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Are you comfortable? Amen. Marie looks real comfortable. Amen. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Thank you for the standing of the word of God. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. God himself is going to give you a sign. Amen. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which, of course, is interpreted God with us. Luke chapter 2, verse 12 says, and this shall be a sign. I want you to notice in Isaiah 7, 14, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Then it goes on to say, and this will be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest on, on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they had made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for your anointing, your pressing. You're pressing on us today. I feel a press. I feel, I feel it's not a bad press. It's, it's a good pressure. You're, you're pressing on us to enjoy your presence. You're pressing on us to, to remind us what this season's about. You're reminding us that many of us, we won't be here next year in 2022. God, you will remove us out of here like you did Simeon. But others will be here. God, that doesn't put fear in our hearts. It puts a, a, a desire to press in a little bit more. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. God bless you. I hope my, my views of eternity doesn't scare you. Amen. I, I just know that life is life. It happens here, and there'll be life in heaven. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling. There were, two, there were several angels that showed up. The Bible doesn't give us a number. It doesn't give us a number of wise men. As a matter of fact, I was looking in Scripture for the word wise men, and I don't think I ever found it. I think I found the word magi, but I don't think I found the word wise men. I was searching in the Scripture for the star of Bethlehem. How do you know about the star of Bethlehem? You see it on your little Christmas cards? Nowhere in the Bible is there a star of Bethlehem. A star did not lead anybody to Bethlehem. Don't look at me shocked and surprised. <laughs> Amen. But a star led the wise men to where Jesus was when he was a little boy. So this is important as I'm walking through Scripture for you to know what Scripture is and what Scripture ain't. Amen? Amen. Many times we get the wrong idea about stuff. But the Scripture says here, therefore, I know some of y'all just got revelation. You went, no star of Bethlehem? I, I just sent that card out. Uh, <laughs> therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And we'll call him Emmanuel. This was the proclamation. And then in Luke chapter 2, we read where an angel showed up and talked to the shepherds. Do you remember the first thing the angel said to the shepherds was, I talked about this Tuesday and Wednesday night, was don't be afraid. It always hits me that anytime angels show up, they always say don't be afraid. Because yeah. <laughs> the truth is, I would be afraid. I would be scared. Amen. If, if an angel, a, a Holy Ghost showed up and spoke to me and I'm out in the nighttime, I mentioned that anytime I'm in the deer stand early in the morning, it's still dark, and I hear the, the, the twigs snap, I'm alert. I grab my gun. I'm looking around. Amen. I might be in a box or be in a, in, in a claw stand, but I'm nervous about that moment. It, it gets me on edge. Here's these shepherds out in the field. They're taking care of their sheep. These aren't just any sheep. These sheep belong to a certain group that I understand as I started looking through history, amen, and picking up on some stuff. But the sheep were important, and they stayed with them night in and day out. They looked after the sheep. And there around the fire, the, the angel shows up and proclaims to them out of Isaiah chapter 7, 14, that a child will be born. Then it says a heavenly host showed up after that. In other words, one angel got ahead of the rest of the angels. I don't know. 
I don't, I don't know if this happened, but I sometimes think that God was going to say, hey, guys, listen, I need you to go, to go to earth, and I need you to tell them that my son's coming. Amen. He's going to be born in Bethlehem. And one angel took off a little faster than the rest of them. Amen. It got there first and proclaimed it. Then the rest of the angels showed up, ah, and they began to sing glory to God and peace on earth uh, to whom his favor rests. And at that moment, I have to ask myself, and then the angels, they came to the shepherd, people who were doing what they did every day, and every night, people going through the routines of life, people living their ordinary lives. This is what Christmas is about to me. Isn't that what the birth of Christ is about? It's about God meeting us not on high holy days, not on just December the 25th, but in ordinary days, ordinary places, and ordinary ways. And when the angel showed up, he said, don't be afraid. Look, I pro pro proclaim, I announce to you good news. It's about God meeting us in our pain and loneliness. It's about God meeting us in our frustration and anger. It's about God meeting us Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's about God wanting to be a part of our lives every day. Yes. And I thank God. That's why God sent his angel to the shepherds. To let us know that the child was for all people. Amen. Not just to the, the ups or the downs, but to the shepherds. Amen. And then the shepherds. It always hit me. <clears throat> this, this one thought. And you have to question. When you read your Bible, who? What? When? Why? When you read your Bible, ask those questions. Don't just, uh, just throw it out. This would be my question. When the angel showed up and told the shepherds, go to Bethlehem, there's a child there being born, and here are the signs. Here are the clues. What are the clues? Manger, which equals a, a barn, right? Which he, a swaddling, a clothes, it's going to be, it's going to be the, the baby's going to be wrapped in, 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 in clothes. Well, hello. All babies that are born are wrapped in little clothes. Amen. But, but a barn. Okay. If I told you, I want you to go to uh, Crosby, and there's going to be a baby born. Amen. And the baby's going to be in a barn. Go. How many know, how many in here own a barn? <laughs> That 15 hands just went up. Where would you know where to go? Amen. So this, this points towards something here when the word swaddling. Everybody say swaddling. Wow. Amen. It points toward the shepherds that go to the tower of the flock. The tower of the flock was on the outskirts of Bethlehem and overlooked the fields in which the Levitical shepherds kept their flocks for the temple. Now, my pastor mentioned to me this last Sunday morning, but I, I wasn't uh, uh, mentally capable to download what he was saying to me. Until the midweek when it hit me again. And then I started, I got a little bit, Cheryl, on Tuesday night. Amen. I know, I know, I'm just saying. I got a little bit on Tuesday night. But then I got more by Wednesday night. And as I moved through the week, I started gathering more information about this, about where did them shepherds know where to go. There were thousands of priests, all right, thousands of priests. And the priests would often go in and they would take a spotless lamb. And according to the, the, the book of Leviticus, they would sacrifice that lamb. Now, when you sacrifice a lamb, if you have ever skinned a deer, if you have ever taken care of a hog, amen, I mean, you're going to get some blood on you. And when they sacrificed that, that lamb, blood would get all over the priest. And oftentimes, it would splatter all over the bottom of their robes. You know, they wore dresses then. <laughs> Amen. It'd get on the bottom of their robes, and that blood would be down there on them. And after a while of doing that, they would cut the bottom of that robe off. Amen. And they would take it, and they would wrap it on a stick, and they would light it. Some history, amen, again, I can't prove this point, but I heard it, that they, they would often take that light and they would light it in the top of the temple, or excuse me, the tower of the flock, they called it, amen, this giant barn in which they would bring all the little ewe lambs in and they would wrap them in swaddling clothes. And that swaddling would show that that lamb had no blemish. Why is that important? Because all the lambs that were sacrificed were unblemished lambs. So they would wrap them in swaddling clothes. So when the shepherds are out in the field, looking after their what? Sheep. Amen. And they knew whenever sheep were born, they would bring them to the tower of the flock. And when they got them there to the tower, they'd wrap them in their swaddling clothes. And therefore, they showed that they were unblemished. Watch this. So when the angel showed up, they said, hey, hey, today in the town of Bethlehem, in the town of Crosby, there's going to be born to you a child. His name will be Emmanuel, God with you. Amen. And you, this will be a sign. You'll find him wrapped in swaddling 
Whoa. Amen. In other words, ding, 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 ding. It went off in their ear. I know exactly where that baby is. That baby has to be in the tower wherever we wrap the lambs that are without blemish. Oh. So they would go there to the tower. Yeah, I know it makes you want to clap, don't it? Uh -huh. Amen. This guy, it's like, what, what? I didn't realize. So that's how they knew where to go. Ask these questions. These are powerful questions. Later on during Christmas, you're going to be able to sit and tell folk that don't know sick them from coming here about your Bible. You're going to be able to pull that out and say, you know what? I'm going to tell you how they knew where to go. <laughs> amen. I'm going to tell you. They, they had a little GPS called Swaddling. Can I get an amen? <laughs> amen. And it brought them right there. And that's why when I read the Word of God, I, I read the Scripture out of John 129. The Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of of the world. You see this in the beginning of Christ's life. You see it in the end of his life. That God so planned it that when he was born, it was about a lamb that was wrapped, that was unblemished. And when Jesus died on Passover, they were taking those little lambs and sacrificing them in the temple while he died on the cross. The lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. It's amazing, isn't it? Even how God thinks and stuff like that. I, mean, I was walking toward the back a while ago, and James asked me, he said, Pastor, should I bump the heat on? I said, no, I'm glad. I'm already sweating. <clears throat> Amen. If you're not sweating, that's because you didn't worship hard enough. <laughs> Amen. Fireball, you got to get your worship on. I'm telling you, kid. Okay, it'll work. Anyway, so the shepherds, the Bible says that the shepherds went out in verse 17, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying, which was told them concerning the child. So... <laughs> when they saw Jesus, amen, and what the angels said to them, and the Bible says after the angels met them, whoop, they went back up into heaven. So they saw them ascend, I mean descend, and ascend. They saw them go back up. They saw this miraculous thing, and when they went and they saw, I, I, you got to imagine the scene. The angels go running into the tower. When they get there, they see the baby. They see little lamb, bad, 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 wah! <laughs> right? Amen. And when they see the little babies there, hallelujah, at that moment, the angels of the Mary and Joseph looked down and said, what are you guys doing here? Well, let me tell you. <coughs> we were out tending our sheep at night, and these angels showed up and told us y'all were here. You kidding me? And Mary looks over at Joseph, and Joseph said, I don't even want to talk about it. Amen. Angels been showing up in my dreams. Amen. They've been talking to me. Angels is all over this thing, baby. I'm telling you right now. That there, that there's God with us, wrapped up in flesh. That's, and so the angels knew there had to be a dialogue. There had to be something that went on at that moment. And then the angels heard Joseph tell them about the dreams that he had, what God was doing in his life, that Mary was a virgin. He had never been with her. And then the angels went out and began to spread the word. What did they spread? That, that Mary was a virgin. They spread that Emmanuel, God, is with us. They spread that the angels, I've seen angels, man. Oh, you crazy, man. You crazy, Fred. You ain't seen no angels. Well, ask Felix. Yeah, Felix said, he saw Felix. said, yeah, I saw the angels too. I didn't just see one. I saw a whole herd of them come down from heaven. They were shouting, scared the, out of me. <laughs> You ought to get excited for stuff like this. I do when I'm reading the story. Amen. So they went around and spread the word. Why is that important? Because this gospel wasn't just spread through emails and text messages and social media. This gospel was spread word to word, person to person. Amen. The Bible says, 2 Timothy 2, 2, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust the reliable men who will also be qualified to teach other words, others. In other words, Paul was saying, I told Timothy, Timothy told reliable people and faithful men who are qualified to teach others. That's how the gospel passes. One day, and I was telling my pastor this this morning, one day I will pass off the scene. And hopefully the things that I have taught and said, you'll be able to keep passing. Because I promise you, most of the things that I have taught you, I stole from other men. <laughs> who stole from other men, who stole from other men. Amen. We keep taking this thing and teaching the gospel to one another. Amen. And passing it down. 2 Timothy 4, 17, Paul goes on to say, But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message, through me the message, might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. I'm going to tell you that through us the message. So when the, when the shepherds went out, they became like modern day disciples. 
Amen. The scripture doesn't tell us what happened to these guys later. They didn't even tell us their names. Amen. But I believe their lives were transformed and changed from that day forward. Amen. Everything shifted in me. The scripture teaches us he that wins souls is wise. That's right. Amen. Spread the word and prepare to win souls. Christmas doesn't just have to be a gift given time. Amen. It can be a time that you can help give somebody the, the gift of life. Listen to me. The swaddling wrap, the light of the world, in a manger, unblemished, amen, uh, directions given. Well, I mean, it's like a whole new light bulb's going off inside my head. Share about this child, amen. Well, he, the Lord himself is going to give you a son, a virgin, amen. Where will he be? Micah chapter 5 verse 2 tells us, but you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will a ruler over Israel whose origins are from old and from ancient times. That's not on the overhead mic. I'm just talking out of Scripture here. But Micah tells us it was Bethlehem. They knew it was going to be Bethlehem. They didn't know where in Bethlehem, but they knew it was going to be Bethlehem. Galatians 4 tells us in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. God, in the fullness of time. In, in other words, when things were right at the right time. One thing I know about God, his timing is always right. Amen. Amen. He's always on time. Hallelujah. Lazarus could be dead three days. But he's on time. Amen. The disciples could be scared out in the boat, in the Sea of Galilee, and the water coming in the boat. But Jesus is walking to them at 3 o'clock in the morning on the waves. How is he doing that? On time. Yeah. Amen. I would rather be in his time. Hallelujah than any other time. The baby, the baby, the scripture says, will cause a falling and a rising of many. Luke 2, 25. Amen. Matter of fact, I'll skip down to 25 here in just a second to you. But let me just tell you. That on the eighth day, they took Jesus to be circumcised. And uh, many of us, you know, we thank God we're under grace. Grace is such a wonderful thing. But at this time, as the transition between law and grace was taking place, they kept the law. And on the eighth day, they had the baby circumcised, according to uh, Old Testament tradition. Eighth day, according to what I understand science tells us, is the lowest blood count or the lowest where the child will bleed the least on the eighth day. Now, I ain't going to talk to you a whole lot about circumcision. You know if he is or isn't. <laughs> All right? But on the eighth day, they went and had him circumcised. They took him to the temple. Amen. When they got there, according to the word of God, amen, they, they took sacrifice and they took a pair of doves and they had the doves sacrifice because they didn't have a lamb. Well, let me say it again. They didn't have a lamb, but they had a lamb. Amen. And verse 25 says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, for everything to, to come together. And the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Now hold on. I thought the Holy Ghost wasn't given till Acts chapter 2. The Holy Ghost has always moved on people throughout Scripture. Moved on Samson, moved on David, moved on, moved on Nehemiah. Amen. The Spirit of God has always been there brooding over us. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Now, in, in Acts 2, came in us, but it, before that, came on us. Now, here, this is very important. It's, it's, there's a difference in saying something and knowing something. Some people say things. They'll say, I'm healed. They'll say, I'm, I'm saved. They'll say this. They'll say that. But then there's something about knowing it. It's down inside you know. You know that Jesus is king. You know that Jesus is savior. Amen. You know you're healed. You know that God's going to work everything out for your good. Amen. Amen. There's nothing wrong with saying it, but after a while, it gets down in your know. Right. And Simeon knew it. I've had people tell me, <coughs> Pastor, I ain't going to die until I see the rapture. And I'll be here till Jesus comes and takes me up. And I'll do their funeral. Hello? Amen. So there's the saying, no. Simeon knew that God came on him and said he would not. In other words, he was going to confirm what everybody else had been saying. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. What was that? That was... Uh, a circumcision and, and, and sacrifice. Simeon took him in his arms. Praise God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. What? In other words, Simeon had got to an age in his life 
Well, he was ready to go home. He knew there was a heaven. He knew there was God. He knew there was a Holy Spirit. And now he's holding the son. He got the trifecta going. Can I get an amen? Amen. He knew Father. He knew uh, Holy Ghost. And now he knew son. And he's holding that little baby in his arms. And he said, now, God, you can let me go. In other words, I've been stuck here until I see Jesus. But now I see him, I got hold of him, now you can let me leave here. It's not termination, it's transition. I'm leaving this place. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. I like, now he's looking right at Mary and Joseph and saying, I like for revelation, I like for the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. I'm not leaving Israel out, amen, they're all in there, light and glory. The, the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. The Simeon blessed him and said to Mary, his mother, your baby is destined to cause a falling and a rising of many in Israel. In other words, he will divide religion and politics in his day. As he moves through life, he's going to cause a division, amen, in life. And to be a sign that will be spoken against. So that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Mama, let me tell you, you're going to love this baby for 33 years. And one day you're going to look upon him and it's going to be like a dagger going into your heart. When he says from that cross, son, look at your mama, mama, look at your son. It is finished and all the other seven sayings. I've never been able to protect you from the loss of loved ones. Reason Bishop Hudson I talked this week is because a pastor friend of our son had died. And we wanted to communicate with each other the appreciation we had for that pastor. We both knew him and met him. And we just realized that his son had passed. For Simeon to look at Mary and say, your heart's going to break, Mama. Amen. This is going to happen to you. I can't protect you from it. Sometimes a truth, though it be hard, you you got to embrace it. you got to understand, just like Simeon, that I'll see them again. Amen. Release me. Amen. There will be salvation. Hallelujah. And let me just say this about Jesus. When I first got born again, I thought, wow, what a wonderful Savior. Amen. He brought this big family together. I got this big family, fathers and, and sons and, and daughters. Amen. I got brothers and sisters. What's what I found out about Jesus? He's a great divider. <laughs> Amen. He divided me from my family as soon as I got born again. Amen. He separated me until they gave their hearts to Christ, and then he united us. Don't be upset. And, and listen, if you don't know Christ, and, man, and I, I believe most of you in here would, but, but if you don't know Christ, don't be upset when somebody gives their life to Jesus and all of a sudden has an issue with you because you don't want to love God the way they do. Amen. You keep loving God until they start loving God. Amen. First he divides us, then he unites us. Amen. He pulls us together. I, when I hear my mom, you know, you guys, you don't understand. You don't know. Amen. My mama raised up. Her mom was a bootlegger. Her daddy was a bootlegger. Amen. Her, 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 her daughter, I mean, her sister. I, I mean, I, I can't do it because she'd be watching. That's the problem with just watching stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but the pain my mother went through in life. The hurt, the disappointments. I watched her uh, clawing on coffins. I was there with her and embraced her through tears, the hurt. Pain. And many of you have gone through the same. I'm not just elevating my mom. I'm just telling you. I, when I'm reading about Mary here, I'm sitting my mom. And now, and, and when I got born again, I divided. I was separated. I, I, I was. I, didn't, I wasn't be trying to be mean, but my life pulled away. Amen. Because I needed to know Christ. And then God put us all back together up to the point that two weeks ago she called the church and said, how can I start giving online? When your mama starts giving money to the church, you pastor online, something has happened. Amen. Especially when the people you've been pastoring for years still don't give online. Okay, leave it alone. Amen. <laughs> That's all right. I just thought I'd catch you right at the end of an Amen. <laughs> I got to start closing here. But looking forward here. Looking. Look, look, Luke chapter 2. Let's keep, we're still, we're still in Luke chapter 2, verse 36. And there was also a prophet, Anna. A prophet. Somebody foretold the word of God. The daughter of Peniel, 
of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years. And then he died. All right? And went then as a widow until she was 84. So she's 84. I don't know when she got married, but I know she was married for seven years. He died. So she's 84 now. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. This hits me. They go into the temple. He gets, he gets circumcised. He, he, they, they're still there. They're sacrificing the doves and pigeons. The Simeon walks up to them and begins to prophesy and talk to them, begins to release himself as he holds the, the child of God. Then after Anna's there, do you ever wonder just what a blessing it is, all the people you meet in church? Amen. What, what a great thing church has been. Some of you found your spouses in church. Amen. Some of you found family in church. Some of you found people who owed you money in church. <laughs> Amen. You, you, I mean, it's amazing what church is like. And here they found Simeon, and here's Anna, and Anna says to them, Amen, I'm looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Looking forward. I am so looking forward to 2022, to people getting saved. Amen. For redemption, for people coming back to God. Hallelujah. Just like Anna. Amen. When I think about him. Yeah. Let me tell you about Jesus. There are things that years ago I mentioned, that three things, four things I knew about Jesus. First, he wasn't a pansy. He wasn't plastic. He wasn't partial. And he wasn't pink. Right. Let me say it again. He, he, he wasn't a pansy. He was a carpenter, son of a carpenter. He slept outside. He climbed mountainsides. He walked on waves. He's a man's man, Jesus the Christ. He wasn't plastic. Amen. He was real. I know many times we got our little plastic Jesuses on our dash and stuff, and we wear a little plastic Jesus around. He wasn't plastic. Amen. He was real. He, he wasn't partial. In other, words, in other words, he wasn't just part God and part man. He was 100% man, 100% God. Amen. God man. He was Emmanuel. God with us. Second, I mean, Timothy 2 5 says, For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given in his proper time. He did not temporarily sacrifice royalty. He wrapped the rags of humanity about his divinity. Amazing. And he wasn't a pink Jesus. Many of us got this idea of a white Jesus. Jesus was not white with blue eyes he was Jewish and anything I've learned about Jewish folk most of them are, are brown eyed very dark skinned amen he had long hair hallelujah amen JT he had a beard hallelujah I get messed up with religions that say I can't grow facial hair if God gave me permission to grow hair I'm growing hair hello amen so some I mean, when I think about it, it's a, it's a, it's a departure because we got these ideas about we have prejudice about what he looks like. If you got any race issues, you need to deal with it. I mean, you got you to deal with that thing. But you got to keep looking. You got to keep looking for him. When I read Luke's account, I'm filled with wonder. We expect something miraculous. We expect amazement to continue. We want the mystery of the moment to continue because if we're really honest with ourselves, we long for something amazing in our lives. And we're hoping maybe this Christmas will be different than other Christmases. Our routines are so predictable, so hurried. Our schedules are frantic, programmed. Our children are busy doing work and school work and activities, sports and things of that nature. Our days are so packed with stuff. I, I wonder if we allow ourselves time to live. That's why I want to just get caught up in the moment. I just want to get caught up in the moment. I just want to say, Jesus, you're such a wonder to me. Amen. I just want to be where you are. I don't want to be stuck by routineness, amen, normalness of it all. The lessons that I learned from the shepherds is look for the signs. Look for the signs. There's a sign. You'll find a baby in a manger wrapped in swaddling 
close. Simeon, he held the sign in his hands. This child will cause a fall and a rise. I don't want you discouraged because there are certain people that don't like you anymore because you're going to heaven. Without being sounding mean, if folk want to go to hell, just go on to hell. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go to heaven. But before I go, I want to be like Anna and remember the redemption. The redemption. Don't let your expector expire. Amen. They say as you get older, your eyes start going a little dim. Your ears can't hear as well. Can't smell as good. Simeon was an old man. Anna was in her 80s. And yet, their expectation stayed alive. I don't care how old you get. Don't let your expector expire. Amen. Keep your expectation alive. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Oh, Lord, we just want to be in your presence this morning. The proclamation. Behold, a child will be born. A virgin will give birth. And he'll be wrapped in clothes in a barn. My, my, my. God, I thank you for your people. Now, right now, God, you you got to talk to their hearts. I, I can only preach your word. But, Holy Ghost, you do what you do. With every head bowed and eye closed, I want to tell you, if you don't know that you know, I mean, you're not just saying it. You know, you know that you know Jesus. You know, you know you're going to heaven. You know that you've been washed from your sins. Amen. If you don't know that, would you put your hand up right now and let me pray for you? Amen. You ain't coming forward. You're going to sit right where you're at. But I'm going to pray for you right where you're at. Just throw your hand in the air and pull it back down. Amen. If you don't know. Hallelujah. Lord, I stand before a confident congregation a people whose expectations have not expired, a people who desire you more than anything, a people whose lives have been changed by the power of God. I thank you for this house. I thank you for your people. Next year is going to be an amazing year, Lord. I know this year ain't done yet. I'm excited about what you're going to do, but I speak peace to this place. I thank you for the angels. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for visiting us in the nighttime. I thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through our dreams. I thank you for this Christmas time. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, come on, give God a little more praise. Yeah. 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 Amen. The child will cause the falling and arising among many. Some of you may think that's a little crazy, Pastor. I'd never, I'd never disown my family. But after I got born again, I moved out. I moved away. My brother thought I was crazy. My sister loved me no matter what. Amen. But my parents did. They actually thought it was all going to calm down. But after I stayed in love with Christ, God began to put my family and my friends, David and Bill and Mike, Rex, all back into my life. All them old boys, they, used to run, they all end up giving their lives back. And sometimes you get old enough to get smart. Amen. Amen. And realize what a necessity it is to know God. Amen. 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 As Pastor David prepares to come, if you need a tithe off an envelope, it is in front of you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Oh, you've been faithful in giving this year. Amen. Continue that as we press through this year. To our guests, thanks for coming today. Amen. We would so appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, those that come in from the valley, hallelujah, our bikers in the house. I look forward to riding next year. I was over at the Harley shop yesterday, and old friends just kept coming up to me. I said, man, I sure miss riding. Hey, Amen. I'll be riding again soon, but, man, I, I miss riding. Matter of fact, the pastor of Crosby Methodist Church was there, and uh, when he saw me, it's funny how those preachers just find each other. He even found each other out in the parking lot and connected and got to talking with each other and praying for one another and about what the Lord is doing in our lives. Amen. And said, man, we, we got to keep riding. We got to keep getting out there and being with folk. This is a beautiful land you live in. 
You know, when Josiah and Natalia told me they're going to take a little vacation to South Carolina, I said, go. When Tommy tells me to come back from Wyoming, I said, hallelujah. Amen. Don't, don't just, you know, if you get an opportunity to go somewhere between Monday and Saturday, go. <laughs> Amen. 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 Everybody got your offering envelope? Where's my, where's my offering taking up? Where's our servant leaders at? Amen. We got, we got to move this on through so I can get past David up here. I know, I know Swap's having a party today. Y'all got a long party, too, from 11 to 4. Amen. Hallelujah. I love it. Going to be playing chicken foot? Yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning what it is. That's, that's, that's a domino game. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As we give today, we're believing God for? Jobs and better jobs. More money? Less hours. Benefits. Sales and commission. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Bills paid off. Settlements. Inheritance. Rebates and returns. Debts demolished. Royalties received. Favor and success to the kingdom. Amen.